Japanese leaders have faced more than a year of questions and criticism for how they responded to the accident at Fukushima Daiichi. New revelations about what happened in the hours and days after the March 11, 2011 disaster will likely fan the flames. NHK has learned government officials had data on the spread of radiation from the nuclear plant. And they knew that data, which was gathered by a system known as Speedy, was reliable. But they deliberately withheld it to avoid sparking panic, even though the media repeatedly asked for the information. NHK obtained a draft report from the Science and Technology Ministry on what happened after the meltdowns at Fukushima Daiichi. The document says on March 15th, four days after the accident, ministry officials used Speedy to identify high levels of radiation in Namie. The town is about 20 kilometers northwest of the plant. The officials reported the findings to the prime minister's office that day. They also combined some of the Speedy data with other radiation readings and released the information to the media. But there were doubts about the accuracy of the results. The ministry finally decided to divulge the complete speedy data at the end of April, more than a month after the nuclear accident. Officials argued they withheld the full results because the findings were based on predictions and releasing them could have caused panic. After they actually took radiation readings, they found that the levels were high. So officials can't really say speedy is unreliable and inaccurate. The system is there for the Japanese people to help residents avoid radiation exposure. So the verification is insufficient from the perspective of the Japanese people and residents. I'm surprised the government did not fulfill its obligations. It is very regrettable and frustrating. The head of the government panel investigating the Fukushima accident says if officials had released the speedy data and explained its reliability, people in Namie could have used the information to come up with an evacuation plan. Instead, they stayed in the town and were exposed to radiation for a month. The government is investigating possible misconduct by a panel of the Japan Atomic Energy Commission reviewing the country's future nuclear policy. It's been found the panel held many closed-door meetings with representatives of the nuclear industry. Cabinet office members held the first meeting of an investigating team. The six-member panel concluded a report on nuclear fuel recycling last month. But it was later revealed they disclosed the unreleased draft to groups promoting nuclear power. Team leader, senior vice minister Hitoshi Goto said a full investigation is needed to restore public trust. The team interviewed a senior official of the Japan Atomic Energy Commission about why it held the closed-door sessions. The official said the sessions were organized to gather information. He stressed that the reports did not reflect opinions of those promoting nuclear power. The investigative team plans to interview other members of the panel and to present its finding by the end of July. Japanese government officials have been criticized for interfering with emergency procedures during the nuclear accident. A member of the Independent Investigation Commission of the Fukushima nuclear accident, Shuya Nomura, made the charges during a meeting on Saturday. He complained that the Prime Minister's office frequently called TEPCO officials at the nuclear plant to get information. Government officials phoned frequently to ask inappropriate and elementary questions. This imposed an additional burden on workers at the plant. Nomura added, that it is necessary for the government to drastically improve its crisis management system. The Commission plans to submit a report to both houses of the Diet by the end of this month. Former residents living near the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant have had to relocate frequently after the March 11th disaster. A survey shows most people had to move four times or more. An investigating committee says chaotic evacuation orders by the government caused the problem. The survey was conducted between March and April of this year by a diet committee investigating the nuclear crisis. About half of more than 20,000 households living near the nuclear power plant answer the questions. The results show that more than 70% of residents moved four times or more after they were initially ordered to evacuate. Some respondents said 
The government later issued evacuation orders to the places where they had relocate, relocated. Others said they moved because the locations they initially fled to did not have facilities suitable for long-term residents or because radioactive radioactivity was too high. The Diet Committee points out that government delays in releasing information or communicating with people caused confusion. A Japanese government report estimates that radiation levels near the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant will remain too high for many evacuees to return to their homes even 10 years from now. The report was presented to local officials in Fukushima Prefecture on Saturday. Estimates were based on government data that predict levels of atmospheric radiation. Among 86,000 evacuees from municipalities designated as no-entry zones, 32% say may not be able to return home by 2017 and even 18% by 2022. Radiation levels are forecast to exceed the annual safety level of 20 millisieverts in six towns and villages designated as no-entry zones. Workers have entered the basements of two reactor buildings at the troubled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. They're trying to find the source of water that's collected there. The crew was sent by Tokyo Electric, the plant's operator. They inspected the rooms housing the suppression chambers of the number two and three reactors for the first time since the nuclear accident last year. The workers were unable to pinpoint the source of the leak. Photos released after the inspection showed no signs of major damage to the facilities or equipment. Tokyo Electric says more than five meters of contaminated water have collected in each unit. That's more than half the height of the donut-shaped suppression chambers, which are about nine meters in diameter. Tokyo Electric will continue to search for the source of the leak. Damage to the reactor's containment vessels and suppression chambers must be repaired before the reactor can be decommissioned. Prime Minister Yoshiko Noda wants to restart a nuclear plant in western Japan. He says it's vital to avoid power shortages this summer. But he needs the approval of the local government. The nuclear committee of Fukui Prefecture has accepted a draft report guaranteeing the safety of the two reactors at the OI plant. A panel of experts met on Sunday, but their meeting was delayed for about an hour by protests against the restart. Panel members reviewed a draft of their final report. They say the new safety standards decided by the central government reflect all the available information at this point. They concluded that the OE plant has sufficient safety measures, even if the reactors are hit by powerful earthquakes and tsunami. But the new standards allow the power company to postpone the drafting of further safety procedures. Building a facility to house the accident task force at OE will take three years. And a ventilation system with special filters for radioactive substances will also take three years to install. Some experts doubt whether the safety measures at the OE plant reflect the lessons learned from the Fukushima accident. The panel has made a list of requests to the NOTA administration and the power company. They include preparations for accidents and a new regulatory body. NOTA repeated his pledge to restart the power plant. I cannot allow power blackouts to happen. It would be devastating for the nation. I believe it was time for me to make the decision. With the committee's agreement, the report will be submitted to the Fukui governor as early as Monday. The governor will then inspect the plant and is likely to make a decision within a week on a restart. If all goes as planned, it'll be the first nuclear power station to resume operation since all of Japan's reactors went offline in May. The next generation of nuclear engineers is in Japan. They're taking part in a program run by the International Atomic Energy Agency. The young professionals will learn about nuclear power, and they'll also study the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. The engineers have gathered in the village of Tokai, north of Tokyo. The IAEA program is aimed at creating capable managers in the field of atomic energy. Many of those taking part in the Nuclear Energy Management School are from Asia and Africa. The program will last three weeks. Participants will look at the latest developments in nuclear power generation. They'll be able to compare notes on the use of this energy source around the world.
I want to understand about the nuclear sector uh, from starting uh, from starting point to the end point. Why the world needs uh, nuclear energy? Participants will visit Fukushima Prefecture to learn about the accident at the Daiichi plant. They will also be able to see decontamination work firsthand. One of Japan's biggest real estate companies has announced plans to build a huge solar power plant in the disaster-hit northeast. The plant will be located on a golf course forced to close after last year's nuclear accident. Mori Trust plans to invest more than $50 million in the 10-megawatt facility in Izumizaki Village, southern Fukushima Prefecture. The company says it hopes to begin building in October and start supplying electricity by the summer of 2013. It says it will gradually expand the plant, eventually generating enough electricity to supply 3,000 households. Mori will sell the electricity to regional utility Tohoku Electric. New legislation requiring power firms to buy locally generated renewable energy comes into effect next month. I believe it is important to use the golf course as a renewable energy factory. The project will help bring life back to the local community. Kate, what's the problem? Hello, Betty. What's the problem? I haven't got a problem. I've got fucking problems. Plural. One away, Thank you. 